back. It's been like two weeks since I uh, did the last dynoing of my car, uh, and we made that really close to 500 horsepower pull. And uh, I'm starting to make some provisions to uh, set it up to do better. So let me show you what I got uh, over here on the table. Okay, so um, I had these sitting upstairs for a very long time. They were for our old 370Z. We never got a chance to put them on. Um, so yeah, they're just 1320 370Z headers. Nothing particularly fancy. Um, I was trying to Google and figure out if you can just like use these headers um, on a 350Z and it seemed like they're pretty much the same thing <clears throat> other than the flange here. Um, which I didn't plan to use anyway. I was going to cut it off and do uh, do some V-bands, which I got. I'll do something like that. <clears throat> Make it a little bit nicer for turbocharging. But also, these two middle bolts are different on the... This is my DE manifold. It uses like bolt-bolt on that side. And if you look at the same header for this one, it uses, uh, you know, bolt... Uh, let's see, bolt-bolt. So like opposite. So this one uses like over here instead of that one. This one uses over here. So, uh, I mean, subtle differences between the two. <clears throat> the biggest noticeable difference is look at the tube size. So much bigger. It's actually crazy when you look inside and see how these things are kind of constructed. It's really dark in there. Maybe we can get some light. But essentially inside there, there's like a stamp steel liner and like looks like some heat stuff that goes around the outside of it and uh, it appears to be like <laughs> under under two inches like maybe even closer to one and a half inches in diameter that's pretty darn small uh, and you know talking about back pressure issues this pulse comes down then this one and this one hit it uh, you know not ideal if you're trying to just make really really efficient dyno pulls so this one, we should be way better off. All these runners are really long, gives time for the pulses to even out before they come to like a really nice merge collector. Totally different than like a log style manifold. <clears throat> so I'm not quite ready to build the new turbo kit yet. I'm just kind of doing some provisions ahead of time. I was gonna, I needed to change out my passenger side motor mount. So I'm gonna change that out, but I couldn't get to it without changing this header, which is really annoying. So I pulled the header out. Now I can do the motor mount. <clears throat> and then I figured since I was in there and I didn't want to do it twice, I would chop this, put a V-band, and um, weld it to my, you know, current turbo kit downpipe. Just change this to a V-band for now. That way, when I go back to re-turbo the car, I'm gonna come off of these headers anyways, and I'll be able to just start from that V-band flange when I fabricate my kit. So <clears throat> I'm gonna put these on ahead of time. It just uh, saves us like work in the future. And um... okay, uh, uh, a whole day of fabrication later. Um, I was able to get the passenger side welded and fitted up. Let me show you. Voila! We have one tubular header with a V-band and uh, I still have my back pressure sensor. Comes across. And then I just got crazy last night and decided I was going to come back today and just torture myself by trying to fit the header in on the other side. So. <laughs> I've done it. I've got the header in on the other side. It's welded to the other, you know, uh, pipe that connects or whatever. And uh, I'm trying to fit everything back in. I got to looking at it last night and I wasn't going to be able to put this header in. Like typically on like a Rev9 turbo kit, you can't put headers in. Because if you put headers in, it gets in the way of all the forward piping and the down pipe doesn't, nothing fits. But what I realized is I had done that coolant uh, pipe delete. I, I don't have the heater pipe up here. So my, uh, my downpipe sits a little higher and comes over close to the transmission and down more than the normal downpipe when I had built it for the three inch. So because I don't have the coolant pipe there, I actually think the path I picked for my exhaust might fit. Um, I mean, like I know it fits over, over this and through this area. So really, the, you can see the primary pipe of the header right here. This primary pipe does come out longer but I think my downpipe comes over it. So as long as my downpipe comes far enough over it before it starts turning down, it should fit. So that's like the only possible complication. And I, you know, it's funny cause I wasn't even gonna put these headers on until I was gonna re-turbo the kit, but now I've got them on. 
I mean, it kind of makes me want to do some more testing because I still have the back pressure sensor and just see what we get. So, I mean, this is kind of an interesting development that I honestly didn't plan for, but I had gone home last night and um, I was listening to the, I just drove like real careful because I have one header on that definitely messes with your tune and stuff. But I had the one header on and all of a sudden it changed the sound of the motor and I thought, well, that sounds cool. I really want to get the other one in. And then like all night I just kept thinking like, you know, like what if, it was just a little better with headers in it because it got a little better with the bigger up pipe. It's gotten a little better with a better transition, like a better crossover. It got a little better with different wastegates and placement. I mean, I mean, what does it hurt? So <laughs> I'm going to finish this up, try to get the downpipe to fit. I'll show you that in a couple of minutes. And as long as it fits, I mean, I'm just thinking, I'm thinking we go back on the dyno. Because like, have you guys ever wondered what the difference would be in like a basic turbo kit with the you know the turbo in the regular spot in the engine bay with just a header going to it instead of the factory manifolds i mean i definitely always wondered because like almost every kit on the market plums off of the factory factory header and all of them have that same massive torque curve and fall off which is caused by back pressure so like uh let's just try it anyway all right i'm gonna get to fabbing get the downpipe to fit and um I mean, wish me luck on that. I hope it goes. Okay, I'll check back in a bit. Okay, I'm back and uh, <laughs> everything fit just fine. Uh, the downpipe went right on. It just cleared the top of the headers beautifully. <laughs> this is awesome. I can't even wait. Like I'm gonna start it up right now and I'll get to hear what a turbo kit sounds like on full tubular headers for the first time. Obviously I had that one bank running yesterday and it sounded a little different. So I'm really excited to see what it sounds like with both of them on. So. Um, Ah, check it out. See, turbo's in there. The downpipe, because uh, my routing's a little bit higher than usual. It's impossible to see probably, but it's quite high compared to I think where most of the downpipes go. So it just fit. I'm pretty excited. Um, okay, I'm gonna just uh, fire this thing up and see how it goes. Okay, so the first dyno pull is in and the results are actually staggering, kind of mind-blowing. This entire time we've been searching for the culprit of the back pressure and I think we've found like most of it in the headers because this is actually crazy. So most of my tuning experience other than the last like five or six years that I've been doing uh, 350 and 370Z stuff has been in the Honda world and the Hondas They'll make like a nice flat torque from wherever their peak torque is to like all the way out to nearly red line and the horsepower just soars up. That's why like a K-series makes so much power, B-series makes so much power and a lot of the other four cylinders and inline sixes will do the same thing. This car has never looked like this. It makes this like monster torque in the middle and completely falls off and as I'm like learning more from the data, you know, boosted, um, you know, we realized that was attributed to this massive amount of back pressure and this huge fall off of power. But changing the headers with no other change did this. 495 horsepower and look at the torque. It's flat all the way out to redline. Granted, it comes on a little bit like slower here, but not a ton. And the, the torque isn't so high. With the, with the restrictive like factory headers, you make way more torque early which to be fair, isn't something that I wanted because on a factory engine, the rod isn't very strong. And also I'm on a clutch that probably can only handle maybe 500 torque because it started to slip at about 470 wheel torque. 
So I really didn't want that massive torque in the middle. I just wanted to come on smooth and pull hard to redline. And now I finally have it. This is like, this is really exciting. I'm about to go look at the boost. Um, but the controller was set to around 15 or 16 PSI. So if that's 15 PSI and 495.5 horsepower, that means we're five, six, seven, eight, three horsepower off of our record. And we are probably seven pounds of boost less. The last, like the really biggest pull we made, the 498 horsepower in one of the last videos was at, tw it would make 22 pounds of boost and then fall to like 13 or 14. And now it's just making 15 and hopefully holding that all the way to redline uh, plus or minus about one PSI. So, woo, this is exciting. All right, I'm gonna look at the data log, uh, clean up the tune a little bit and, and see if we can maybe break 500 today. That would be weird. Okay, you guys are never gonna believe this. On that last dyno pull, we made 505 horsepower at 14 PSI. That's crazy. So really, the back pressure issue with boosting these cars is largely in the header. Um, the turbo kit that I have right now crossing over and all the pipes, it's certainly not like all the way optimized either. I do think there's like some room to have slightly bigger piping and a little bit better merge collector before it transitions up to the turbo. But I'm kind of blown away that after all the testing, we really found the major culprit. Um, check it out. Hey! Um, I think maybe I'll do one more pull and try to turn the boost up and just see if we get any more, but I'm pretty much happy for the day. So I might just leave it there, but that is, man, that's great news. Wow, this is crazy. So I decided to make a few more dyno pulls and as I'm going, the power is just going up and up and up. And uh, I did get to a point where it's not really going up anymore. Uh, we ended up making uh, 525 horsepower. The torque is a lot more flat across the curve, and I'm like, uh, pretty surprised. So the headers changed where the power band was. We had less torque early and more ability to make the horsepower out farther, which is kind of a nice change. I don't feel like, uh, I don't feel like I'm really losing anything. Obviously, that was really monstrous torque in the beginning, and if that's what you need, maybe stock headers are still an okay way to go, but... Um, you know, I, I like it this way. I feel like there's less chance I'm gonna break my motor and I can hopefully make to a slightly higher horsepower. But um, it all of a sudden got hot in Texas today, which is making it a little harder to make back-to-back -back pulls. Um, but it's okay, 525 horsepower for changing the headers. Um, we basically made, you know, another 25 horsepower um, at less boost, like way less boost than we were making it before. <clears throat> we made 498 at like, 20 more than 20 it's like 21 or 22 and now we just made i made 520 just a minute ago before it was hot at 15 pounds and it only made 525 at 17 so it's not really worth going up and boost but at least i know that we're kind of at that uh right at that threshold again <laughs> but 15 15 pounds of boost to make uh 520 is great um I just can't believe all the stuff I keep learning about these ridiculous uh, turbo kits. Um, after doing this, I have some more thoughts. <laughs> so we'll have to see what we can get. But um, I thought that was kind of fun because I really was planning on being completely done. And then here we are. So, ah, very, very interesting. All right, who knows what's next, but I'll see you guys in the next video.